Hey, this is um, another commentary. I'm just going to be basically doing the same thing as my Barossi, which is just um, commentating on the specific obstacles and techniques. So, this first obstacle, um, pretty easy. Um, you know, there's a thing why this was called Neo Exact Fix. I think the first obstacle was the one that he actually fixed, because I think it might have been really laggy um, or something. Um, but also, one big thing is the landing there um, on the onto the back wheel platform or concrete um, platform is the fact that um, it's really important in a lot of back and front tracks, and that's a really good skill to have, especially if you want to get good at stationaries. I think it's uh, imperative to how to learn specifically how to balance on your back wheel. So that really. Uh, I mean, that's part of balance on your back wheel, but it also helps you to balance on your back wheel um, for just general uh, back wheel use. So it's it's a good skill to have, actually. Um, and especially on Spago Kuros track, I think it's Sephiroth, you need to, you need to uh, do that technique. So um, that's a good starting track to um, realize the potential of that sort of technique. Um, and also on the run, I could have gotten, I could have got a lot better. Um, I am first, so usually once I'm first on a hard track, I usually just leave it. But um, yeah, you can definitely get a lot better on this one. I would say if I grinded it um, quite a lot, I could maybe get uh, sub five volts. Um, but as you'll see, the second last obstacle on this track. Um, is uh is pretty random or more so it's just hard to get the first time or even the second or third time so it would be hard to get low fault but most of these obstacles you can control yourself on um you can recover so that's definitely um uh, that definitely makes it easy to get low fault and i spent about two minutes on that climb i honestly don't know why <laughs> i think i was so uh um so afraid that i would just fault because of the death barrier again um, I'm not sure why he put a death barrier on that last one when he could have just put a hit trigger on the ground to make you uh, fall unconscious there but and it seems like uh, in Maddie's tracks he puts a lot of obstacles like this where you have to land um, after a flip uh, in fusion and on evolution um, and it it's easier than it looks, but it's still quite hard. Sometimes it can be sort of random. Um, the best way to approach that kind of thing is um, you know, obviously flip and then almost go in the backwards position. And then as you land, throttle and go forwards. And that sort of gives you the most, um, I call it stickability to the wall. And also that squishy squashy back there was uh, harder than it looks. I'm not sure why though, but yeah, so this is the second last obstacle, um, and the bit which makes it random is mostly uh, this bit right here, just because it's back wheel, so um, there's no real reliable way of getting on it sometimes, especially if you have a poor jump, you can't recover at all, so. and I think I rushed it back there. Um, I don't know why that's so weird. It, it should. It seems simple, but um, um, the the front wheel bounce of the little plank above um, in front of the dynamo is further further than the further than it seems. I don't know why though. And I had quite a few more fails in this obstacle, but I thought um, I'd just show a few. Um, this one was kind of funny. Yeah. One thing I do want to mention is that um, when I edit, um, I know a lot of people do the same. Um, but uh, some people do it differently, but um, specifically what I'm talking about is when I edit um, either 
um, if it's a hard course, I either do um, like a progressive sort of fail until I do the op school. And if I don't have any progressive fails, then I just do it until um, I just either show the op school or I don't um, until I finish it. So anyway, thanks for listening.